All right, so I'm just going to show you the two React hooks you're going to be using 90% of the time, the ones that are replacing state and the lifecycle methods. So these two hooks are called use state and use effect. And it's pretty crazy because these replace pretty much everything we were using before with the class components. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is create a component called title in a new file Oops. now I need to import react and I need to create a functional component Called title, and then we want to return some JSX title. All right, last thing I need to do is actually render this in my app, and there we go. Our text is appearing. So, this is a standard functional component. We know how these work, so let's rate the hook without wasting any time. Use state, like I said, is one of the two you're going to be using the most. And let me just write it out and then explain it. Use state is a function that returns two values. And it returns these two values in a tuple, which is an array of size two. Okay, so use state takes this one argument, which is the initial value of our state. And in this case, my title. And it's throwing that initial value in the first variable title. Okay, following so far. Now, the second value returned in the tuple, which is extracted with destructuring ES6 destructuring and stored in the variable update title is a function now whenever we call that function we can call it multiple times we are updating the value of the variable title okay so we can think of title as this dot state dot title and anywhere we use the variable title it's acting as a state variable and then update title we can think of as a function that basically performs a this dot set state on title. So the update title is equivalent to basically this this dot set state title is whatever we pass in to update title as a parameter. Okay? So to demonstrate this, I'm just going to add in a button in here. And on click, I'm going to pass in our update title function. Save. And then say click me. If I can spell. Boom. New title. Okay. So we're just updating the value of title to new title by clicking the button setting the new state to new title okay so with use state you can you can actually call it more than once to set multiple state variables you can call it as many times as you want and interestingly you're gonna get a different update state function every time which is a departure from how we used to do it so if I want to create an input And let's just put in a, uh, rather, let's do a h3 here. Um, now we want to store the, the current value of our input here. And then update input. And then we'll, we'll set it initially to empty string. And 
do value equals input value and then on change we need our event from our input and then update input to e.target.value okay so now we can we can type in here and then what we're, we're going to want to actually do here is pass in our input value. So now we, we have a dynamic title we can update to whatever we put in the input. On click, we, we change it to our new value, right? So every time we type in the input, on change function is being called. That's being stored in input value, right? And then we click the button. It's taking the input value variable, passing it into update title and setting title. Now, let's say instead of updating the title, we want to add to a list. Okay, so let's do um, const list update list equals use state. Wow, use state empty list, empty array, and let's map our list here list.map item uh, just because we're good react developers we want to do an index that we can use as the key we'll return a div key equals i div and then map out the value of item then we close this and uh, since we have an empty list it's going to be nothing so far now instead of updating the title when we click the button let's update list and now we're no longer gonna use the update title value that's fine um, instead we're, we're gonna add to our list and um, I made a small mistake because we can't just add to update list the way we would add to changing a string. We have to take all the values from the old list and pass in the new value that is stored in input value. And the way we're going to do this is with ES6 syntax. We're spreading in our old list, which could be empty, or it could not be empty. We're spreading in all the values of our old list, and then we're appending a new input value to the end. And now when I save that, I can just keep adding new items. New. Looks pretty good. And um, let's just say I also want to clear my value when I call this function from my input value. Let's do this. Boom. Update input blank. And this should work like a charm. C, D, E. Okay, we spent long enough on use state. Let's look at use effect, which is pretty straightforward. We'll import it the same way. Use effect. Now, we call use effect slightly differently, uh, where we just kind of put it in the body of our function and will automatically be run when the function, or rather, component mounts. So use effect actually takes two arguments. The first is a function. You could, you could call it a callback, I guess, but it might only run once. And then the second argument is an array, which can be an empty array. So let's just demonstrate this by logging out what, um, what our effect runs. And what we can expect, let's get rid of this update title is assigned a value never used. Let's just do this then. Well, we don't need it. Throw it away. Okay. So when our page loads, we'll see that effect ran automatically. So the first thing you'll notice with use effect is when this component mounts, it'll automatically run once. Okay. So the first argument is a function that will run one or more times, at least once when the page loads up. 
Okay, so console log effect ran when our component mounts. Now, the array is actually an array of listeners of state variables. Let me explain by example. So, if I pass in list into the array and I add an item to my list, keep an eye down here. My effect will run when I add to that list. So what does that mean? Well, my function is running at least once when the page mounts, and then it's running every time a variable I pass in here changes. In this case, I'm only passing in list, so only when I add to list is my effect running. Okay? I can pass in multiple values here too. So if I pass an input val and list, then I change my input val, it's running every time. And then I'm clicking and it runs again. So you can see this is actually kind of powerful because not only can I listen on one effect multiple times, which is basically a componented update function that is running only conditionally on a single state variable, but I can also do multiple use effects in case I want different componented update functions for different uh, state variables. That's about it guys for the basic hooks. Anyway, if you learned something from this video, hopefully you'll be confident enough to try out hooks now because they really simplify everything even if you're new to React. So let me know what you think in the comments and do you like hooks? Do you not like hooks? And um, I'll catch you guys soon.